Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's no clouds, miss. Boy was a smash hit overseas. Are you getting much fan mail from adoring girls? Uh, no, because uh, uh, they don't know my address. <laughs> <laughs> Take to mend the freezer. Geordie, how long will it take to mend the freezer? Geordie, how long will it take to mend the freezer? Over and over, a short clip of film will come up on the screen. The actor will repeat his line Geordie. until both the lip movement and the style are right for use in the final soundtrack. Geordie? Yeah? How long will it take to mend the freezer? Oh, two, three days, maybe. Why? I want to come out on the next trip. You know what I think? Yeah, I know. You keep telling me. Anybody wants to be a fisherman these days? Needs his head, head examined. examined. <laughs> The Needs a fraction more ring than that at, at A. More of a raunch. More of a raunchy thing. Dwayne Eddy. <laughs> <laughs> you really gotta D into it more, you know? <laughs> Here, lie down. Come on, don't move. Lie down. Your legs all smashed up and you gotta stay put. Here, I'll buy you some painkillers. Though aware of the chance of Bluefin being called the son of Stormboy, producer Hal McElroy, the man in charge of the money, had no doubts about the final choice of Greg Rowe to play Snook. Come on, who's on the wheel? No one! Don't you know? They're all gone! Water spout, Dad. It's just you and me. There were two schools of thought in regard to the role of Snook, the one being that Greg was not the right person because, in fact, with his, storm, uh, his history of Stormboy and the great success, that uh, people would think of him in those terms and think it was simply just a sequel to Stormboy, which it clearly isn't. Um, and that he wasn't exactly right physically for the role. Um, the, the, the role as written was, was a, for a much more ugly, more gawky boy. Um, again, we felt that uh, we should use someone who was a fine actor and someone who was sympathetic. And, and Greg is both of those things. And uh, with his screen test, he... He beat everybody else hands down. We had people who were physically right, but they just didn't have the expertise. I never thought I would because uh, there were so many other boys that I thought they might need for the part. And, uh, well, I'm just really excited about it. And I can't wait to work with Hardy Kruger. Other actors went on, using casting books, memories of other performances, and the advice of agents. People had to be found to play Snook's mother, his sister, and the crew of the Bluefin. With casting complete, an old Odeon picture theatre was ready to continue its new career as a filmmaker's studio. The first two weeks were to be spent there filming the effects of the water spout and Snook's courageous efforts to save his father and the boat. All it needed was a few finishing touches, a lick and a dab of carefully prepared makeup, and Snook was ready to face the camera. Everybody and everything.
so much for the glamorous life of an actor and the worries of a director. Greg is in and out of the water for over eight hours in midwinter to produce a few minutes of film. Even with his protective clothing, he needs hot water poured onto him every few minutes before going back in again to freeze and finally to be rescued. I hope you come and see it. Uh, it's been actually very nice to work with this young fellow here. And I hope you enjoy the film Bluefin as much as I did working on it with him here. Well, as you can see, I'm sort of always on my father's back. <laughs> to get Bluefin into the theatres and to get the public to want to see it. Well, now it's time for Pin the Trunk on the Elephant, yes? That's and let's right. meet our first contestant. Greg, this is um, Daniel, and Daniel goes to school. Publicity uh, is essential in selling a film, and in the case of Bluefin, cost over $300,000 or one-third again of the cost of making the film. We, we want you. Greg Rowe. We want Greg Rowe. We want Greg Rowe. That's better. That little mic there's for you, Greg. So for people like Greg Rowe, the show and the selling goes on, with a constant round of television, press and personal appearances. At the same time, there's posters, bluefin icy poles, gimmicks, competitions, and a re-release of the original book, designed to make the public aware of the new film. And they're off. All that remains before bluefin tests its luck in the marketplace is the first night, a gala premiere designed to send the film off in style. I think you'll agree with me when you've seen the film that Greg Rowe, who did such a splendid job in Storm Boy, gives a magnificent acting performance in this film, which is arguably one of the biggest screen roles undertaken ever by an Australian actor. Greg's co-star is Hardy Kruger, who's appeared in over 50 international feature films. Bluefin is the story of a boy and his relationship with his father and the way the boy grows emotionally. It has, I believe, adapted extraordinarily well to the screen. And I believe that it won't be too long before the story of Snook, his father, and the blue fin is delighting audiences all over the world, as did Storm Boy. The sheer family entertainment, it will have tremendous appeal, and I wish it very great success. Now, it gives me very great pleasure to launch Blue Fin at this charity premiere on behalf of the Adelaide Central Mission's Goodwill Industries.
Nice set of wheels. Yes, uh, adequate for my purposes, I find. Look, uh, when you're finished with that, would you be so kind as to check the oil and park it over there for me? Yeah, sure. got a lawn boat. Yeah, maybe. But there's something strange about it. Let's go and read it. Gee, do you think we'll come? Oh, yeah. 